You mm -hmm. work for a long time on something. You get to a place where you've achieved something that you think is good. Put it down for a while, right? Then do something else. Then come back to it with fresh eyes and be like, what could I change? What could I, where can I go from here? And then you can start growing again on the same subject. Today, we talked to Dave Arnold. Yell has called him the mad scientist of cooking, and if you do a quick Google search, you'll probably see a variety of seriously innovative and wacky experiments and recipes. Having seen Dave talk three times, I can confidently say there's never a dull moment. He is full of energy, and generally, I'm just trying to keep up with all of his ideas and thoughts. It's hard to summarize Dave's crafts and accomplishments, but here's one story that I think encapsulates him pretty well. When he founded and first launched a museum of food and drink, he designed and built a 3,200 pound cereal cannon to show how cereal farming works. Today, we talked to Dave to learn about his process, his inspiration, and all that goes with it. I used to be the director of culinary technology at the French Culinary Institute back when that existed, uh, where I taught kind of new techniques and technologies to chefs. I also had a number of bars that used a lot of kind of new technologies. Uh, I had a podcast called Cooking Issues, uh, where I answer people's kind of technical questions about cooking. I've always been a tinkerer, kind of like a, a gearhead. That spills over into when I'm cooking. Like I love to run experiments. I love to kind of do new, you know, new things. Do try things that are interesting. When you tinker with things, do you normally have a clear direction of question? You're asking to start with or does it kind of build and flow over time of what you figure out what your goal might be a lot of people want to know how do you do something creative whether it's art whether it's cooking uh writing uh and you know the scariest thing in the world if you want to go down that road is to not have any rules or you know it's kind of like the blank the blank canvas phenomenon the blank page phenomenon Nothing's more difficult than just staring at a blank page and not knowing what uh, you're, you're working on. And the same really goes for cooking or for any kind of innovation. I think uh, if you give yourself some boundaries, right, give yourself a structure to work in, it really, because it cuts out so much of the stuff on the edges, it gives you more kind of ability to do interesting things within the uh, sections of work that you're choosing to, to focus on. I think additionally, keeping your eyes open and really being a deep observer of what you're doing, never putting yourself on autopilot. Most of the time, an idea that I have that ends up being something interesting, right? What I, I get that idea because I'm working on something else. And I observe something when I'm working, when I'm cooking, when I'm tasting something, and you're always kind of keeping your, keeping your brain working, focus on what you're doing, focus on, you know, constantly trying to be present in what you're working and when something pops out you'll say oh that could solve this other thing that i this other problem that i had last week or last month or last year or five years ago i tasted something i can bring these two things together and so it's all about trying to build up your memory and trying to be present in what you're working on and really like observing what's going on around you Obviously, with someone with your expertise, you're able to draw on a lot of different experiences and pieces of knowledge. When you first started out, what do you think you relied on? You need to build a certain amount of that self-confidence to let yourself put yourself into the world, right? And But at the same time, what you have to temper that with is the ability to realize that other people, no matter how old you get, know a lot more than you do about things. Be confident enough in what you're doing that you can put stuff out there and you can create things and be proud of what you're working on, but always be humble enough to realize that you can still learn. And as long as you keep that balance right, I think you can continue to grow for a long time. What interested you most about cocktails? And I know you're writing a new book right now. Is there a new niche that's piqued your interest? At the time when I was uh, really developing a lot of the techniques that you know I'm known for, there weren't as many people working in that field. So I saw a niche. It's like I tell my son, uh, Dax, who's in high school now, I'm like, you know, what you need to do is find your own hustle. Because it's, you know, if, if you go into something that's already fully saturated, it's hard to make a mark. You can, right? And people always will. But if there's a little more elbow room to learn, if there's not as many people in the space, then you have room to learn, right? 
And then now you built yourself as a presence. And then when other people come into it, you're already a presence where it's hard to become a presence in a field if it's already got a lot of other people working in it. It's hard to find something that you're interested in where there's a lot of room to grow, but it's kind of, uh, I don't think you should be nervous about it either. You know what I mean? I think eventually, hopefully everybody can find something that they are interested in where they can grow over a long period of time uh, and make their mark. But uh, I know I used to be nervous about it when I was, uh, you know, growing up. I was nervous about everything, you know, but things have a way of working out, I guess. If you are trying to do something that's different or you're in a non-saturated place and there's a, like a lot of stuff's not known yet, there's a lot of extra work you have to do because 90% of the stuff that you do is going to be terrible, right? And then it's never going to see the light of day. Like, I'm not afraid to fail. And so if you fail, if you fail and you fail big, then yeah, people say that you're doing things that are wacky. You get some really good successes if you get a bunch of failures. Almost all of the good things that I've come up with were because something else I tried to do failed. Failure can be a path to success. You know, when I used to have interns when I was teaching uh, at the culinary school and I would spend weeks on a project, building a piece of equipment, let's say, weeks, months, like a lot of money, a lot of time, and then just abject failure. And then you're like, you have to be willing to go, you know what I mean? They're like, aren't you mad? I'm like, no, this is what happens, you know? Uh, but that's kind of the, you have to enjoy the process. You have to, in, you have to enjoy the process separately from the payoff. So the payoff when you have a success is great, but you have to enjoy the process too. Otherwise you probably shouldn't do that, <laughs> you know? you know that eventually you'll have some successes. And so the fact that X, Y, or Z didn't work, you can file that away as something that didn't work, right? And so people will say, what do you, what do you think about, oh, I don't know, corn-based cocktails? And I'm like, well, I haven't really had one that I've liked, but I've worked a lot on it. Going through the process of failing with something teaches you a lot. What I like best is when I fail at something and then somebody else is successful with it. And then I can analyze what they did to be successful, whereas I failed in it. And then you can really learn where your blind spots are. It's no fun. It, like If you don't learn and you need failures to have successes, then I wouldn't be doing this because it wouldn't be fun anymore. You know, I like a certain amount of repetition and everybody does. You need to have like, there's a, there's a repetition in becoming good at anything, but there needs to be some variance to keep it interesting for me. Do you ever feel like a project or idea is fully resolved? As a philosophical matter, I don't like to say that anything is done or perfect because it is arrogant to think that you have achieved uh, perfection in anything. Mm -hmm. You work for a long time on something. You get to a place where you've achieved something that you think is good. Put it down for a while, right? Then do something else then come back to it with fresh eyes and be like, what could I change? What could I, where can I go from here? And then you can start growing again on the same subject instead of, uh, it takes a very specific kind of person to be able to work on one project forever without changing. And I don't have that kind of stamina. So I think you just need to know how you best work. But yeah, yeah, never perfect. Even someone without a science background can make personally rewarding observations about fairly simple cooking things with, with, you know, a modicum of research. Cooking is an interesting way to teach people how to observe. You know, if they want to go into the sciences, it makes it, uh, I think it's a helpful entree. I didn't mean to pun with entree, but yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thanks. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I hope, hope anything I said was useful.